has, when the three minutes has expired, if you continue to speak in excess of three minutes, you'll be asked to stop speaking and leave the podium. If you fail to do so, you will be subject to being escorted out of the building by the sergeant of arms. For the safety and security of all, no one is to approach the tables where the board members and the city officials are seated without obtaining permission from me. If you attempt to do so, you'll be stopped by the sergeant of arms and you will be subject to being escorted out of the building by the sergeant of arms. It is my sincere hope that everyone participating in these procedures tonight will conduct themselves in a polite manner with respect shown to all regardless of disagreement. Okay, Bruce, we're going to start. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight uh, on the Citizens Forum, we do have four individuals that have signed up to speak. Uh, just as a reminder, you do have three minutes to speak, uh, and I guess I'll be keeping the time tonight. Uh, first on the list is uh, Jason Cole. Hello again. Um, I'm up here tonight to talk a little bit about a subject that hasn't been brought up in a while. It's Ms. Gertrude Phillips. And where her home was flooded with sewage. This board passed an ordinance that they would investigate the situation, which they did, and a subject matter expert determined that the city has some fault in it. But part of that also was that there would be a settlement with this, and that part hasn't been done. We're a city of laws. If we're passing a law, we should follow it through or rescind it. At this point, we're going halfway. We can't pick and choose what laws we want to enforce and you know, what parts of each ordinance we want and which ones we don't. So I'm urging this board to read through that investigation again and go through and really look at her situation and what she's been through since November of last year. This was any of y'all's homes. I'm sure this would be already resolved. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Next on the list is Debbie Hugan. Good evening again. Uh, my name is Debbie Hewan and I live on Randall Lane in Lake Forest since 2000. And um, tonight I want to speak about something that everybody, or most everybody, it's near and dear to their hearts because a lot of us have enjoyed the Blue Angels for so many years, uh, both when I lived in Smyrna and when I moved to Laverne, I was able to enjoy them. And uh, we grew to really uh, love seeing them. And you all know that the um, captain, Jeff Coos crashed and died, and he stayed with his plane and uh, thus more than likely saved dozens, if not more, lives by staying with his plane, even though he would be dead. And uh, just uh, want to do this because we do have a veterans wall, and we do have uh, in the plans to have two benches donated as part of the plan. Um, we've been raising money, um, and we've got $1,231, and we want to apply it towards a bench. I've spoke with AC, the Parks and Rec Director, about this, and we want to do that. And, uh, with, uh, and I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure the city doesn't have to approve it since it was already as part of the plans, and we plan for people to donate money to have these extra features of the wall added, such as the two eagles, the statue, and uh, a couple of benches and planters. Uh, so we're not trying to cost the money, cost any money to the city because it'll go there. And AC said that he can make sure that the bench is actually uh, anchored on so nobody can take off with it or anything like that. And uh, But I wanted to ask and see if maybe the city, as a gesture of honoring this hero, if they would donate a plaque for the bench um, in his honor and uh, see if y'all could toss that around. If not, we can keep a fundraiser going uh, if we have to. But um, 
we have a lady here that um, is making these decals that have the number six on the plane, and she's selling those for a dollar. And at first, half the proceeds go to our Laverne bench, and half goes to the family of the hero. And then now that we're getting close to reaching our goal, uh, which was $1,500, uh, she's going to start giving half the donations to Smyrna, whatever they're going to do, and then half to the family. So I want to make sure that we've got the city on board, and y'all agree that this is something that we can continue with because it is in the plans for the park uh, for the Veterans Memorial Wall, and I just want to make sure you all know about it and approve of it, and also that we also have these awesome decals for your car and they're only a dollar and they have been one hot property down in Smyrna and I've brought a lot back to Laverne and have people really wanting them so please uh, if you can discuss this tonight for even a few minutes I would love for you to do it uh, AC unfortunately won't be back until possibly tomorrow but thank you very much thank you Debbie uh, next on the list is Laura Brewer Hi, I'm Laura Brewer. I actually um, live in Smyrna, but when I first started making the decals, I, I knew I didn't want to keep any of the money. The only money that's uh, coming out of it is for the uh, for the supplies, about 30 cents a decal, which is actually less now because I had a whole bunch of supplies donated today. Um, but all the like she said, all the proceeds are going half to his family, half to. Laverne for the bench for now. Uh, right now, I've raised for half the the half that's going to Laverne, 234, which will actually probably be double by the end of the week. Um, and with the new final I have in that was donated, more proceeds go out. So uh, as long as she needs it, I'll keep donating. And then when I'm done with that, it'll go to Smyrna. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Last on the list is Matt Church. Hello, Mayor, Alderman. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Tonight I want to discuss uh, giving money to a nonprofit, the Laverne Rescue Squad. And uh, I want to use up my three minutes. most important thing about this factor is uh, the meet and greet that the that was held at the rescue squad September 20th with Miss Brown and I, I just don't feel that it's right I want to read this to you again in order to maintain a tax exempt status 501c3 nonprofit organization cannot engage in political campaigning nonprofits 501c3 tax exempt status should be ever vigilant about this prohibition. A violation could result in severe consequences. The federal tax law is very strict on this issue, political campaigning. As a meet and greet, that would be considered political campaigning. A 501c3 organization is absolutely forbidden to directly or indirectly participate in any political campaign on behalf of one or more candidates. Violations of this code could lead the IRS to completely revoke your organization status and exemption status or impose excessive taxes on your organization. Why I go back to that is I feel that if the board gives them that money, the board's saying it's okay for the meet and greet. With that meet and greet, the biggest problem is allowing that to happen. Federal tax law is very strict on these issues. Very strict. What does participating in a political campaign mean? Organizations with 501c3 status cannot participate in political campaigns. What is a political campaign in general? 
The IRS rules refers to campaign between people who are running for offices, public election, election for president of the United States, candidates running for governor, candidates running for mayor. Candidates also running for lower elected positions such as commissioners. What is participating? Your organization cannot participate in any campaign directly or indirectly. Having a meet and greet September 20th of that election year, in my view, is participating in political campaigning. The IRS rule. The IRS rule is called a fact. And the circumstances test to help determine whether or not the organization has violated the prohibitation of the political campaign. This means the IRS will evaluate any political misconduct within the contents of an organization or activities. With that said, some activities that the IRS has found to be violated Mr. Chair, the prohibitation on political campaigning include inviting political inviting political candidates to make a campaign speech at an event hosted by the organization use this organization's funds to publish materials Mr. Church, your three minutes is up in order to publish Mr. Church, can you step away from the podium? Any statement that the organization is directly You're not talking. I'm just speaking. this wakes up the people of Laverne, don't put one candidate to speak, well, Is that the last one? Yes, sir, that's the last one. Being, being the last one and it's after uh, seven o'clock, we just, we just gonna go right into the, right into the regular meeting. Uh, I've got the prayer and uh, Alderman Brown has got the Pledge of Allegiance. Everybody stand. Heavenly Father, we pause a moment to give thanks in the hustle and bustle of our everyday lives. Be thankful for the things we call, we all take for granted in this great country. Comfort and bless all that is in need. Keep safe all the brave men and women that is serving this great nation here and around the world. Our hearts go out to the family of Naval Blue Angels, Jeff Coos. Peace on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Take the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order of business. Uh, <clears throat> this is the Mayor and Alderman meeting for June the 7th, 2016, regular meeting. We need to approve the minutes for May 3rd, 2016, public hearing, and the minutes for May 3rd, 2016, regular meeting. A motion <coughs> to approve. Motion to approve. Need a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I hear, hear none against the minutes to be approved, not approved. Uh, I call that the minutes for the uh, 
May 3rd, 2016 public hearing and the May 3rd, 2016 regular meeting is approved. Moving on down to apartment reports. Ricky, fire. <coughs> Mayor, Alderman. <clears throat> For the month of May 2016, we had a total of 271 calls. Those consisted of two structure fires, 23 fire alarms, two vehicle fires, one grass fire, three hazardous materials calls, 25 motor vehicle accidents, 198 medical calls, six canceled en route, and 11 miscellaneous calls. The average response time for the month of May 2016 was 3.1 minutes. And on that next line, I, I think there's an issue with that line. I will bring that back to y'all next month. Uh, we had two water days at the schools. Uh, so I know that that number is not right. Uh, I, I don't think that that got figured in there properly. So uh, what you have there is, it was, is usage of the fire department itself for different things, hydrant flowing and fire suppression and all. But I don't think that the number is in there for the two water days at the school, but we will get that uh, rectified by next meeting because I think we used quite a bit. We were, we were at both schools for about an hour to an hour and a half. So I know that number, my calculations in my head would put that up around 74,000 gallons of water. So, but uh, I just wanted to point that out before, beforehand. Any questions? Thank you, Ricky. Thank you. Police, Mr. Mike. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman, in your packet, you can probably see a little better there than you can on the board, but we're giving you a comparison there of our calls for service, January through May, uh, 16 versus uh, 2015. As you can see, the calls for service and the hours of day uh, have all pretty much increased as across the board. Here's the next one, Glenn. The table actually shows you the change. It's 38.8% increase uh, when you look down at the very bottom of the table in this year versus last year. And if we continue going as we're going now, then at the end of the year, we're gonna have over 37,000 calls or about 10,000 more than we had last year total. So the calls for service have increased considerably this year. Go to the next one. Now, that one's a little bit cluttered, but you have to kind of look at it carefully. But each of those bars are a day of the week, and they're colored according to the day of the week. But they kind of give you an idea of the calls for service uh, for each of those days a week and how they're increasing, and they're increasing pretty well consistently. But uh, particularly Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, you'll notice that in those later hours and the wee hours of the morning is when we've seen some pretty good increases this year. And it, it's a variety of things. It's all different kinds of calls for service. And then that just simply pulls out the day of the week and gives you an idea of what we're doing each day of the week by hour of the day uh, for those first five months. Go ahead. Uh, <coughs> I can't really see that one. That's the actual May uh, preliminary report that we get out of 10 call from TBI from what we key in. And uh, you can see there that uh, the activity is there, but if you look at the next one, which is uh, January through May, um, that it? That's it. They closed the file on us on the second instead of the fifth, like they all, always do for some <coughs> reason. But you can see that uh, <coughs> we're running a little bit ahead. If you go to the next one, we're running a little bit ahead on all of the those that we have keyed. Okay, I didn't get that one to Bruce. Sorry, Bruce. But uh, the there's actually like a 4.8 percent increase in. Uh, all reported crimes, but if you look at the number of arrests, the number of arrests are up also as well. And once again, the domestic violence uh, cases are up this year. We're seeing a lot of DVs, uh, tremendous number of them. 
uh, and even uh, some folks that are under the age of 18 attacking a parent or someone else. So the domestic violence has increased considerably. Anyone have any questions? Any questions for the chief? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Moving down to code, Randolph. I see that you hold your reports closed. Yeah, I, I figured it's time I start taking better care of my reports so that they don't fall into the it's rough wrong hands. You, when you can't lay that down. Tell you, man, I'm telling you it is. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman. <clears throat> the monthly report from May 2016, uh, single family dwelling permits, there were four. Commercial permits, there were two. Miscellaneous permits, there were 17. Sign permits, there were 12. Others to include additions and remodel, there were seven. There was one mobile home, two commercial plan reviews. Total number of permits for the month were 43. Plumbing, four single family, two commercial. Mechanical, there were six single family, two commercial. Tall grass complaints were 218. Junk cars were 75. Others uh, to include various, a various amount of things, uh, there were 110. Total building inspections on the month, there were 206. Our impact fees, monthly revenue with impact fees are at, are at 486,249 on the year. The total number of single family permits issued this year to date have been 48, this time last year was eight. Total number of all permits this year have been 214. Anybody have any questions? Thank you, Randall. Thank you. Moving on down to park and rec. Uh, who's gonna stand in? Is she going to join me tonight, whether she wants to or not? Um, you guys got the numbers for the month of May. Um, 30 help desk tickets, 96 man hours, 19 overtime hours. Um, some of that was carry the load, senior prom, taking care of the memorial wall. Upcoming events, Park and Rec Advisory Committee workshop will be June the 20th at 6 p.m. Senior Citizens Advisory Committee will be June 16th at 4 p.m. Farmers Market next Tuesday, June 14th. I think it's three to seven, three to seven. Uh, upcoming events, we have summer camp going on right now at the multi-purpose building, June the 6th through July the 22nd. Um, July 4th, 6 p.m. is our 4th of July festivities. Um, zone status will be taking the stage right around six. Um, Memorial Wall. Tiles are expected. We ordered some more last Tuesday. We placed an order today. So as we're getting those in, we're gonna to continue to put them on the wall. Um, I do have brick order forms. I'll leave a stack of them on the table at the end of the night. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Cassie in the Senior Center. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to quickly just inform everybody um, that Lowe's has um, generously chose the Laverne Senior Center um, to receive funds and services um, in the amount of $1,500 that will go towards an outdoor courtyard slash recreational area for our seniors. Um, any additional donations that they're able to get from other Lowe's vendors um, will not go against that $1,500. That will be an addition. Um, and so we're just really excited because the seniors have um, expressed a desire to have an outside area for so long, um, just to have somewhere to relax and play games outside and just enjoy the weather. Um, and so we're really excited about that. Um, um, the donations will come in the form of picnic tables and umbrellas, flowers, possibly a new grill, um, paint, just things that are going to make our outside area look beautiful and, of course, safe for our seniors. So we're really excited and just thankful that Lowe's chose us to do this. So thank you. Any questions for Mike or Cassidy? Thank you. All right. Thank you. They do. They do a good job. Sailors, finance. Good afternoon, Mayor and Alderman. Um, tonight's report is uh, we're 10 months into our fiscal year. This is for the month of April, year to date. We only had two more months left out of this fiscal year. Uh, for the general fund, revenues have exceeded expenditures by approximately $1.4 million. Sales tax, we've collected approximately $5.2 million. It's about $1.1 million better than what we budgeted and $749,000 better than prior year. 
State Street aid revenues have exceeded expenditures by approximately 17,000. Stormwater revenues have exceeded expenditures by approximately 322,000. You know, water sewer fund revenues have exceeded expenditures by approximately 819,000. Uh, second page is our balances in our various bank accounts. And the third page is comparison to prior year. <coughs> For the general fund revenues are down about seven million. Of course, we had the bond issue in the previous year. Uh, expenses are down about two point seven million dollars. For the water sewer fund, um, don't be alarmed. It's showing that we're down about one point three million dollars. We're actually not down that. We just reversed some prior year accruals. We'll reaccrual those uh, at the end of the year, and it'll bump our um, revenue back up. So don't be surprised. Don't be alarmed at that uh, revenue being down because it's really when we get to the end of the year, it won't be down quite that much. Uh, expenses are up about 372,000 for water sewer and tap fees are up about $490,000. Any questions? Thank you. Moving on to library, Donna. Mayor, Vice Mayor Alderman, first of all, good evening and excuse my voice. It's actually a little bit better tonight. For the month of May, the attendance in the library was 7,425 with an average of 413. We had a total of 98 new library patrons and also we had 2,348 computer users. We had 20 programs with a total attendance of 166. If you will notice our programs and our attendance was down in May. It's because we did not have any children's programs. We were preparing for our great summer reading program, which kicked off with a bang on Saturday, June the 4th. Wanted to give you a little update of how many that we currently have signed up for our summer reading. Our little dribblers, and what's more, I left the L out, uh, birth to age two. We currently have 16. And those are our tiny, tiny ones. And these are the ones that the parents are going to be doing activities each day with. And we're so excited about that. Ages 3 to 12, in two and three-fourths of a day, we have signed up 237. Our middle and high school agers, we are so excited about this number. 71 in two and three-fourths a day. We have signed up, and tonight when I left, we had our first teen program, and it looked like there were about 18 teens in that room, so we're really excited about that. We've got some great teen pro programs going on, and this is really neat. Ages 18 years and up and over, Exercise Your Mind Read, we currently have 108 adults signed up. So a total in two and three-fourths day, we have signed up 432 people. You can sign up the rest of the summer all the way through July 30th. We hope that you do. We, we encourage the community to come over. We do have programs and activities for everyone. Two uh, big events that I do want to share with everyone. On Saturday, June 18th from 11 to 2, we are having a Star Wars Family Day, and we are doing a Jedi Academy. So everyone wants to be a Jedi, right, with your lightsaber? So please join us on June the 18th. Saturday, July 16th from 11 to 2, we are having Healthy Family Day. Make it a play date. Bring your children. Bring your grandchildren. Enjoy some great vendors that's going to be there. Learn about healthy lifestyles. It's going to be a really fun day. Are there any questions? Any questions for Donna? Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Donna. We'll move on to Thomas <laughs> at Water Creek. <coughs> it's cold up here. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Alderman, Bruce. Thank you for this opportunity to present our report for the month of April of this year. Our plant delivered 115 million gallons for the customers of Laverne. Of that was uh, 5.2 million that was reclaimed from our backwash lagoon and, and, and resold, saving the city on uh, metro sewer fees. Uh, rainfall has been a big issue with the lake. It, at the beginning of the month, it was about three foot below normal. It's a little bit more now. Uh, the little bit of rain that came didn't really 
run off to the lake. So it's it's getting it needs some rain. Uh, all our operations were really good for the month. Uh, our flushing team hit 26 sites and flushed out about 700,000 gallons to freshen up the system. For our distribution part, for the month of April, we approved a bacteriological test on two new lines that were put into service. Uh, for the customer service, we only had three calls, which were all pressure complaints. So we kind of self-proclaimed ourselves the uh, best water treatment plant in Laverne. Uh, our financial update is our maintenance cap. Uh, it was just under a little twelve under twelve thousand dollars for the month, which puts our remaining balance for the remaining ten months at seventy thousand uh, six hundred seventy four dollars. Our safety part in April was we did some a little bit of a mock chemical drill just to make everyone aware of what to do and who to call and and how to protect themselves if we ever do have a spill. Our personnel <clears throat> had 36 hours of outside training. Two of our operators went for certification. We had a 50% pass rate on that one. Um, but uh, that's about all I have this month. Work for Thomas. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. We'll move on to Public Works Department. Mr. Russell. Good evening, Mayor and Alderman. This is for the month of May 2016. <clears throat> we had a total of 77 requests for brush pickup with uh, a total of 501, uh, 41 loads. We had 113,270. Our, our pickups are down, but our, our weight is up because we're getting more and more every day added on. In our workhouse program, we have 575 hours with 119 work orders and 31 hours overtime and 13 of that on call. For the fleet department, we had a total of 42 vehicle repairs, 36 in-house and six outsourced, 31 oil change, uh, replaced 15 tires, three brakes, uh, equipment repair uh, was 25. And that's on some of our mowers that we got that we got them fired up for the summer with a total of 10 hours overtime. Any questions? Any questions? Garland, you mentioned the chipper service. Oh, this might be a good time to mention. Yeah, it is a brush truck. It is not a chipper truck. A brush truck, okay. Yeah, we've been with that for about It might be a good years. idea to, to remind the people, if they hire a company to come in and, and right. trim the trees, that We're company into is a lot responsible of that, for you know. not, not the city. We only do it. For, for residential. Right. Residential. If you, if we you don't have do a it. contractor come out or somebody that you pay or is not related to you, then if you put it out there, you know, we got the right not to remove it. And that's the same thing that happened on, was it 598 Forest Ridge with a house burnt? You know, the guy came in and cut all his trees down. That would have been a day's job just cleaning that up. But, you know, we're still getting. We're getting piles where he was out in Lake Forest, say, two and a half weeks ago. I went back about four days after he started at Bondwood, and we had about 18 addresses already had brush out. And, you know, and we try to make it through as quick as we can. I've got a guy on it now that's, he's working 10 hours a day this week and working Saturday on it 10 hours trying to catch up. But the more we take out, the more they put in. And it's strictly for residential, residential not for business. And then I've talked with Rachel, uh, the PIO. She's going to, we're going to put together a little video and put it on Channel 3 about the, uh, the uh, brush truck, you know, what we do, the sizes, the things we don't take. We don't take any trash at all. We don't take any wood <coughs> as far as lumber or glass or anything. We don't have to take anything. Only thing we can take, we can't even take shrubs with the, uh, the root balls on it, you can't take them because they don't want anything going through their crusher. You know, a lot of cities around here is having to pay to dump that brush. Luckily, we're not having to pay anything to the city of Murfreesboro for them to crush it up. I know Goodlesville, they used to have to bring people in to, to grind all their brush up that they collected over the month, and it was expensive. Thank Any you. Thank you, uh, Gordon. And yes, uh, Sand Hill did get striped. Did it? Well, congratulations. Moving on to utilities, uh, Michael. Mayor Autumn, 
good afternoon. For the month of May 2016, the water department had a total of 103 work orders. New meter sets were 11. The Tennessee one calls were 64. We had three main line breaks, uh, 19 service line breaks. Gallons of water not sold was 23,310. Fire hydrant inspections and repair, there was 172. Uh, that's actually working with the fire department. That's how many we prepared or cleaned and prepped for them guys to come behind us and paint. Uh, meter inspections were 30. AM, AMR installs was 21 with a total of 27 hours overtime. Uh, sewer department, we had 113 total work orders. Service calls were 75. Pump stations was 38. Final grinder pump inspections were two. Manhole inspections and repairs were 20. And grinder pump rebuilds in-house was 13 with a total of 42.5 overtime for the month. <clears throat> Any questions? Thank you, Michael. Thank you, sir. Moving on to Human Resource, Gerald. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor Alderman. Here's the Human Resource Report for the month of May. We had two external jobs posted with 23 applicants, eight actual new hires, zero resignations, one termination. We had two workers' compensation claims, three liability claims, 148 care here appointments, two no-shows, 331 care here enrollments total, and a record number of 12 HRAs conducted, one short-term disability claim for a total claim dollar amount of $280,530. Are there any questions? Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. That ends the department reports. We're going to move right into old business. Number three, second reading ordinance 2016-03. It's an ordinance of the city of Laverne, Tennessee, adopting an annual budget and tax rate for the physical year beginning July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2017. Okay. We had a public hearing earlier today. I uh, need a motion to approve or deny. Make a motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Got a second. Any discussion? Uh, Alderman Broker. No. Alderman Brown. Aye. Alderman Jones. Aye. Vice <coughs> Mayor Green. Aye. I say aye. Ordinance 2016-03 passes. Four to one. Moving down number four. Second reading. Ordinance 2016-04, an ordinance to amend Title V, Chapter 4, Section 5-401 of the Laverne Municipal Code regarding the public advertisement, advertising and competition bidding required a purchase over $10,000. Need a motion to approve or deny Make a motion to approve. A motion. Need a second. A second. A second. Any discussion? Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Broker? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Ordinance 2016-04 passes 5 to 0. Moving on down to consent agenda. Need a motion to approve or deny. Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Need a second? Second. Alderman Brown? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Broker? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. The consent agenda passes five to zero. Moving to new business. First reading. First reading ordinance 2016-05, an ordinance to amend the 2015-16 physical year general fund budget. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. Got a motion, need a second? Second. Any discussion? Alderman Broker? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Motion uh, ordinance 2016-05 passes five to zero. Number three, 
Number seven, first reading, ordinance 2016-06, an ordinance to amend the 2015-2016 physical year police impact fee fund budget. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. Need a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Broker? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. The ordinance 2016 06 passes 5 to 0. Moving down number 8, resolution 2016 12, a resolution of the City of Laverne to uh, appropriate funds to nonprofit organizations. Need a motion to approve or deny? I make a motion to approve. A motion to approve. Need a second? Second. Got a second. Any discussion? Alderman Brown? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Broker? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Resolution 2016-12 passes five to zero. Moving on to number nine, a resolution 2016-13, a resolution to amend the City of Laverne purchasing procedures. Need a motion to approve or deny? Motion to approve. Need a second? Any discussion? <clears throat> Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Broker? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Resolution 2016-13 passes five to zero. Moving down to number 10. A resolution 2016-14, a resolution to adopt a drought management plan for the city of Laverne. Need a motion. To approve or deny? Motion Thank to approve. Mo motion to approve. Need a second? Second. Any discussion? Alderman Brown? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Alderman Broker? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Resolution 2016-14 passes five to zero. Number 11, a resolution 2016-15, a resolution to accept McFarland Point Subdivision Section 8 received a favorable recommendation from the Planning Commission back on May 31st, 2016. Need a motion to approve or deny? I make a motion to deny. I got a motion to deny. Need a second? <coughs> got a motion. Need a second? Hearing no second, the motion fails. I'm asking, I'm hearing, a, I'm going to ask for another motion to, to approve. Make a motion to approve. A motion to approve. Need a second? Second. Got a second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion. Alderman Broker? Aye. Alderman Brown? Aye. Alderman Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Green? Aye. I say aye. Resolution 2016-15 passes 5-0. Down to number 12, a motion to approve an encroachment agreement for the above ground swimming pool to be located in a public utility drainment easement at 1122 Poplar Hollow Drive. Need a motion to approve or deny? Got a motion to approve or deny? I'll make the motion to approve. Need a second. I, uh I would like to, I'd like a question on that before I, I make Let's a get a second. Let's see if we can get a second we'll discuss it. Need a second? I'll second it for discussion. Got a second for discussion? Now we open up for discussion. I just want to point of clarification. Uh, this is the agreement that you explained to us, Evan, that we will be writing an addendum to the understanding of the landowners. Yes, yes sir, that, that's correct, Alderman Jones. This, this agreement, uh, if, if you do approve it, then be presented to the landowners and I guess it's up to them whether they want to sign it or not but basically as the city what you're saying is if you want to be able to locate your swimming pool within our easement then you're going to have to sign this agreement and then that agreement then gets recorded at the register of deeds office so the world's on notice at that point that okay. this is a, an issue with the property. Thank you. Yes sir. Any, any further discussion? One thing I would say is my question I asked on Thursday 
um, where I said would this be precedent setting um, and each case would be handled on a case by case basis you know again I'm, I'm, I'd be more I'm more for this because it's at a, a above ground pool but are we opening up for someone next week or next month to ask for an uh, in ground pool or or whatever else a shed a fence so on I think it's a policy matter and I, I don't tend to weigh in on policy issues I try to stick to legal issues but on the policy issue I would advise you to, to let something like this be really rare I, I would not get in the habit of just allowing uh, people to encroach on our easement as a matter of course now th this you know is there's nothing wrong with allowing them to do that but I think Tom's points will take in that you know if uh, we don't want people to have the idea that because you have a city easement, then you can go ahead and do whatever you want. Just come up here and get get this agreement, because sometimes it's not going to make sense. It would be a really bad idea, for example, uh, to, to allow an in-ground pool because that would be some considerable expense. At that point, if the city had to come back in and make use of its easement, well, that's thousands of dollars, I'm sure, you know, uh, to, to get that fixed. So it's it's something I think you look at on a case by case basis, but I think it should be used sparingly. That's my two cents. Any, any further discussion? With a first and a second, Alderman Broker? No. Alderman Brown? No. Alderman Jones? I'd have to go with no. Vice Mayor Green? No. Well, I'm going to be the odd ball. I'm going to say yes. This, this uh, resolution fails for against one four. Resolution 2016-15 fails. Now we're down to Mayor and Alderman comments. Alderman, Alderman Broker? No, sir. Alderman Jones. I'd just like to say one thing, Mayor, and I'd like to say it to the citizens. One of the things that we talked about months ago, I mean, <coughs> I, Normally, I would just take this and I would go home and I wouldn't say anything, but we need to say something about this. We talked about this months ago, about bullying. Bullying doesn't stop in school. We saw what bullying is tonight. And as a, as a, as a civilized city, I hope y'all see this for what it really is. And I really would wish that we can get over this and we can move on. Because this, this does not need to happen. We can have these meetings and we can come in and do the business of the city and just move <coughs> on. And I wish we could just continue to do that. We, we really need to, it, it really needs to just stop. And the more attention that bullies get, or individuals seeking attention, the more that they're gonna continue to go out, it's just like a drug, the more they're gonna look for it. That, that's all I gotta say. And I'm, I'm, uh, the other thing I'd like to say, I'm sorry, uh, uh, I'm thankful for, uh, Lowe's for their donation, and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about that also. Thank you. Alderman Brown. Nothing. Vice Mayor Green. Nothing. Uh, I want everybody to keep uh, the Brown family and the Victory family in our prayers for their loss, and especially the, uh, the U.S. Naval Blue Angel uh, Jeff uh, Coos, um, his family, keep a, keep a prayer for his family, um, and um, um, it's, it's a bad, bad situation, but stuff happens quick. Like I said in the workshop, we got firemen and, and police in this city that accidents can happen, and we all pray that it never does, but you know, our, our thoughts and prayers goes out to the Blue Angel family, and uh, and uh, I don't have anything else to say. And if Bruce, if nothing else, I'm gonna just call it meeting adjourned. <laughs>